My dear friends, over the past year, as I have reacquainted myself with the Archdiocese of Atlanta, it has been a sort of homecoming for me. I served here for 16 years as pastor and have many wonderful memories. Because I was installed as your Archbishop during this coronavirus pandemic, this is the first opportunity I have had to address the entire Archdiocese. And so I want to say to you the most important thing first. Even though my travel and interactions with people have been limited these past months of social distancing, I have felt tremendous love and support from you. In these difficult times, your faith has strengthened my faith. And so I say very simply, not just as head of the archdiocese, but as a spiritual father, I love you. I care about you and your well-being and your spiritual health. I thank God for you, and I pray for you every day. Today's scripture speaks of healing. Like the leper, we certainly long for a physical cure for this virus. Many of us long for healing in different areas of our lives. Thankfully, as we see in today's gospel, every time Jesus heals a physical ailment, it always has a spiritual dimension. For the leper, healing was not just a relief from a physical disease, just as importantly, it meant that he could become part of the community again. We have a similar challenge in our parishes today, don't we? Despite cautions and restrictions, we long to operate like true communities again. And so, for this year's annual appeal, I've chosen the theme, Our Joyful Return to the Lord. This theme has a triple meaning. First, it is a call to conversion, a challenge to return to the Lord with your whole hearts. Secondly, it is a call to action, to give generously of yourself to the church. And thirdly, it is an invitation to return to regular attendance at Mass, especially those who are healthy. Practically speaking, how can we return to the Lord? I would propose the tried and true paths the saints have shown us. Prayer, sacraments, and service. First, we must recognize those of us who are faithful we are the heart and the hands of the church. Our devotion and example keeps our parishes alive. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your faithfulness. Please continue to be salt of the earth and light to the world. All of us, though, are called to continual conversion. True happiness in life can only be found in relationship with Jesus. Daily prayer is essential to develop this relationship, and so is forgiveness. As soon as we can, we need to return to the sacrament of reconciliation. It may be from behind a mask or from a car window. But like the leper, actively seek God's healing. Some of you are listening to this message 
from your pews. But many of you are watching online. I want to invite all Catholics of good health to come back to Mass, not just via phone or a computer, but at your home parish. The Eucharist is a physical reality. Our Sunday gathering is a time to be happy in the Lord, to be fed, refreshed, and renewed. If you are of good health, please come back home to Mass. Finally, to truly demonstrate your faith, get involved in service. None of us have a me and God relationship. We must be involved in a Christian community. We must be working with others to serve the poor, to educate our children in the faith, study the scriptures, and in a hundred other ways. There is not a, a deeper truth than the one St. Francis of Assisi gave us. In losing yourself, you will find yourself. In giving, you will receive. And St. Paul reminds us that we must decrease and he must increase. Prayer, sacraments, and service are all a sure path to the Lord, a path that I am on as well. My duty is to make the archdiocese a place where every person can encounter Jesus in a meaningful way. This task is not easy, and so I ask for your help. First, please pray for me. As I begin my ministry here, making difficult decisions and guiding the archdiocese the best way that I know how. Secondly, warmly support your priests, deacons, and seminarians. They are my brothers in ministry, and they need your love and care. Thirdly, become personally involved in your parish. The church is not just the archbishop, and not just the priests, not just an institution. The church is the body of Christ and is alive through you. Even with all the safety protocols needed right now, we must find creative ways to serve each other. Fourthly, generously support your parish and your archdiocese. I love the word for stewardship that our Latino brothers and sisters use. Co-responsibilidad, co-responsibility. We must pull ourselves together to meet our obligations, which are many. We have tremendous expenses to train our future priests, to serve the poor and the addicted, feed the hungry, and to educate our children in the faith. Despite these needs, during my first annual appeal, I want to be crystal clear. Your financial support is not the bottom line. The true bottom line is that you have given your heart to Jesus and that you seek him through prayer, sacraments, and service. Yes, the archdiocese needs your financial support. But the true wealth of the church are the souls of each Catholic. Please be generous with your money, but more than that, be generous with yourself. Give yourself to God. I close with the words of Pope Francis in his letter, The Joy of the Gospel. I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ. 
No one should think that this invitation is not meant for him or her. Whenever we take a step toward Jesus, we come to realize that he is already there, waiting for us with opened arms. And may the Lord grant you his peace. Amen.